museum back to life. You know, people sit out on the front porch hoping people will come by. Go forth and do good. It's insane. I have the most understanding wife in the world. I treat everybody the same thing. Oh, that's the other thing I love about Marietta. It's like a melting pot. You are listening to Marietta Stories. Each week, veteran podcaster Bill Nowicki brings you the heartwarming, interesting, and fun stories from the people that make the community of Marietta, Georgia, a place to call home. Here's your host, Bill Nowicki. I went over to the last Martinis in Music at the Marietta Cobb Museum of Art over on Atlanta Street, met up with Sally McCulley, and she's going to tell you all about Chocktoberfest. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit more about it. Well, I'll tell you, you can get sign up to get beer on Saturday, but if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. There's 86 artists, 40 breweries, 120 plus beers, and 20 plus wine. So check it out. Go to Chocktoberfest.com to Check it out, which is C H A L K Toberfest, T O B E R F E S T dot com. And also go to Marietta Cobb Art Museum dot org to learn more about all the great events they have. Sally McCulley, I haven't talked to you in a while. We're at the Marietta Cobb Museum of Art. I had you way back in season one on the show. What's happened since 20, whatever it was, 2016? 2016, <laughs> God, was that that long ago? Um, well, I mean, we've had a couple of Chalktoberfests. We still do an events. My favorite event in Marietta is Chalktoberfest. Oh, I just love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, yeah. I think since 2016, was it international then, or? It was, yes. International. Yeah, like so, five countries or something. Okay, yes. Yeah. In 2016, 17, and 18, and 19, we had international artists. And then COVID happened in 2020, so we couldn't have Chalktoberfest. Uh, but this year, we're bringing it back. And we are not doing international artists just because of the whole, don't know if we can get them in the country, don't know if we can get them out. So we're only going to do United States artists. However, there are a couple of artists um, that are going to be in the United States during that time. One from Turkey that is going to do a chalk piece for me, and the other one from Mexico that's going to be in the country. So, yeah. and talk about the for those folks who don't know about your organization. I love your mission. Why don't you talk about that? Sure. Um, so our mission is building community through art. When I came on board, it's been 13 years ago, we were just trying to bring people into the museum and getting people acquainted with the museum. And we started Martinis and Music Night, and we did exhibitions, and we started Kids Art Camp and classes. And in fact, I'm taking a pottery class like right now. I'm, I, I'm loving it. It's How are you fast. doing turning pottery? Oh, I I, you know, I had never done it before, but a group of about five of my friends decided we wanted to try it, and I've done a coffee mug and a vase, and I, I'm loving it. So. I remember your story from the first time I talked to you. There was something about you being in school and them not accepting you as an artist. Or... Well, I started out in the art program at Florida State University, and I could draw. But I wouldn't say I was quite an artist. And so I started out doing that, but I was taking marketing courses and other, and I just decided at that time that marketing and advertising was more a good route for me. But it's funny that I did advertising my whole life and I did kind of full circle and came back to the museum. Back to the story. So uh, Martinis and Music is back. It is back. We st we had the first one, I believe, in April. About 250 people came out for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we had one tonight, and it might have been around 200. I'm not sure what the, the exact number was. But I'm just glad to see people out and about after this co whole COVID thing. You know, people are ready to get back out. And I think if you've had your shots, hopefully most people have, then it's a good time to get back out because it's not going away. I mean, you, hopefully things will get back to normal. 
Yeah. And your biggest fundraiser is Chalktoberfest. Yes. Tell folks a little bit more about that. You have beer, you have all kinds yes. of stuff. Going. When I started Chalktoberfest about eight years ago, the, the beer festival wasn't part of that. It was just the artists. But then we added a couple of years later after I started it, the craft beer festival. So on Saturday of Chalktoberfest, we have 125 different kinds of craft beer, 25 different kinds of wine. Right now, if you get your tickets, now until September 1st, it's only $35 to try all those beers and all. Then uh, September 1st, it goes up to $40, and then it's $45 at the gate. Started the craft beer as part of that. That's only on Saturday. And then on Sunday, the craft beer goes away, and we've got kids' art competition, non-professional competition, and it's just a lot of fun for everybody. You know, I love good food, and I love the Zaxby's over at 591 South Marietta Parkway, not only because it has good food, but the, the place is run well. And who runs it? John Sylvie. John Sylvie gives back to the community. He loves Marietta. He's always supporting sports, humanitarian things, and he makes things happen. And he doesn't look for a credit, but people have recognized him. He's won humanitarian awards. He's won business awards. He's a great guy. So check out the Zaxby's over at 591 South Marietta Parkway and help support his local franchise business. I don't know a whole bunch about buying and selling a home and getting financing, but Jason Waters and his team over at Affinity Home Lending sure does. They won Best of Cobb three years in a row, have closed 933 loans in 2020, and they're on track to close a whole bunch more in 2021. Check them out. He's legitimate. He comes from Cobb County, went to the University of Georgia, majored in finance. He's a certified financial planner. And he brings a wealth of experience to you, and he cares about the community. He's even on the Marietta School Board. Check him out. The Waters team at AffinityHomeLending.com is their email. You can give them a call, 404-403-8787, or find them on their website, AffinityHomeLending.com. And I remember walking around and talking to people, one of the artists, and I said, why do you you know, it's just the first time you've been here. And they said, no, I come every year because they treat me so well. I mean, they feed me in the morning. They make sure I have everything I need. And that's part of what Marietta's, I think, makes Marietta great. Oh, I think so too. I mean, if you don't treat the artists well, then you don't really have a festival. So we try to make sure that all the artists are taken care of. Um, this year, we're going to have them Ubered from the airport up here. Um, I've got a guy that's going to be carting them from the hotel over here. Um, we feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The, the conference center care, takes care of their breakfasts, and we have Takaria Tsunami, Marietta Pizza Company, all these local people, Zaxby's, Williamson Brothers, um, they all come in and say, hey, yeah, I'd love to feed the artists. So it's really nice. And it's your biggest fundraiser, is it not? Oh, absolutely. It really funds us for the year. When I first started it and didn't have the beer festival, one of the, I ne I'll never forget, one of the city council members was saying, you know, how are you making money if all your sponsorship money goes to the artists? And I thought, yeah, I'm not really making any money. So I, the beer festival started springing up, and I thought, you know, if I could sell 2,000 tickets at $40 a ticket, that's $80,000 that I could use to bring in artists and feed them, put them up in the hotel, and make them feel like they're welcome in the city of Marietta. Well, I just think it's the coolest thing. I love going to it, and the art is absolutely beautiful. Do you have a topic for this year? We decided because of the COVID thing that it's going to be artist choice. We've done artist choice in the past. We usually do a theme though. One year was Halloween theme. One year was Renaissance theme. So this year we're just going to kind of let the artists do what they're the best at. But we do have four vertical boards that always go up on the fence um, every year. Actually, they've um, MacGyver had a television show and they called me to ask that they could show those pictures oh, really? in their television.
television program. So it's really cool, and people love, they get their picture taken in front of them. It's always up there on the fence every year. So those pictures that are up there now have been up there for two years because we, and they still look great. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Folks that don't know, block off yes. the square. Yeah. We block off the entire square. Three streets are designated for the professional artists, and then one street is the craft beer festival on Saturday, and then on Sunday it becomes the school kid competition, okay. non-professional competition. Yeah. And the artists take like a couple of days a lot of times. Sometimes it sprinkles rain, they have to cover it up. It's right. really a challenge. We have these huge tarps that go down the center of the street, and I have an app on my phone called Rain Aware, and it'll say 30 minutes to rain, 20 minutes to rain. At 10 minutes to rain, I blow a bullhorn, and all the artists put their stuff outside the rope, and then at the first drop, I blow a bullhorn again, and they pull out the tarp and cover it all up. And then when the, it gets through raining, they uncover it and they start chalking again. So nothing, nothing ever really gets ruined. Do you still need sponsors for different artists? What, what do you need? You know, what, well, how can we help you out? Well, we have completely sold out really? of all of our blocks. The sponsorship has come out of the woodwork this year, which is a fabulous thing to have happen. Right now, there are no more sponsorships to be had. We just want everybody to come buy beer festival tickets and come enjoy themselves. The, the actual festival is free to the public. The only thing that they charge for are the beer festival tickets, and that's kind of how we make our money. So please buy beer festival tickets. And you can go to your website? Yes, um, chalktoberfest.com. And then if you want, there's little tabs, and one of them says, craft beer festival you click on that and it takes you to a vetney and then you can purchase your tickets there well i know you have a lot going on just preparing for chalktoberfest but what are you kind of looking at 2022 what's it look like to you right now if you look in your crystal ball we are very excited about our next exhibition that's coming up during chalktoberfest it's a traveling exhibition out of chicago and it's a, a guy randy bacon and he does this incredible photography this huge photography and the exhibition is going to be called the road i call home and it's photography of the homeless and it's amazing so we can't wait to get that in here and you know get that up and it'll be like I said during Chalktoberfest which is we have a hundred thousand people come to Chalktoberfest so the museum benefits from that and gets you know a ton of people coming in to see that exhibition so it's going to be really cool. Great and what's the date I don't think we talked about the date. The date for Chalktoberfest is October 9th and 10th Eighth is when the artists come in. You are welcome to come into the museum free that weekend and see this incredible exhibition that we're yeah. going to have. Sounds like uh, there's a bunch of stories in those pictures, too. I love when you can see a bunch of things when you look at art like that. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. In fact, the photograph that is on our postcards that are going out, it's just the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. You what? Know. Describe it an old woman and she's got a gazillion wrinkles, but it's just such art the way he's photographed this woman. I, I just can't wait for it to come. Well, I love the museum. I love what you're trying to do here in Marietta. It's really top notch. I know you work very hard to do this under very challenging conditions. Thanks for all you do, Sally. Well, thank you. I do want to point out that this is a Cobb County building, and the county really takes care of us, as does the city of Marietta. So kudos to both of them, and um, just love being in this old building. Yeah, It's, it's great. Uh, it's got huge pillars out front. People don't know what it used to be used for, but it's funny. It was the post office? Yes, it was originally the post office in 1908 that's when the building was built and then in the 60s it became the library and then in 89 it became the Marietta Cobb Museum of Art. I think it's one of the things we should all cherish here in Marietta Cobb County uh, and I think we should all support you folks and art is such an important thing and you guys have a mobile unit I remember you talking about. Yes, we, um, several years ago, we got a grant to buy a U-Haul truck and we renamed it our mobile art mobile and we go to schools and hospitals and take art to the kids and they get to go up into the truck and do all kinds of arts and crafts. In fact, it will be out on the street for Chalktoberfest. Right. So people will 
get to go in and see what we're doing. Great. Well, I hope to see you and everyone else at uh, Chalktoberfest 9th and 10th and come to the Merida Cobb Museum of Art and see that great exhibition of uh, homeless folks from Chicago and that traveling art exhibition. And thank you so much, Sally, for giving me your time. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Check out Chalktoberfest.com, $40 tickets to all the beer on Saturday. And you can always go there Saturday or Sunday or both to see the art. Also check out Marietta Cobb Art Museum.org to get tickets to that great art they have there right on Atlanta Street. This is Bill Nowicki saying thanks for listening to Marietta Stories Podcast. Tell a couple friends about the show and go to visitmarietta.ga.com to learn more about this great city we live in.